Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Janet Kaufman. I'm a faculty member at the Philip R. Lee Institute for Health Policy Studies at University of California, San Francisco. Our institute was founded by Dr. Lee and others at UCSF uh, in the mid-1970s. Uh, and our mission is to conduct research that informs health policy making. Uh, I'm going to try to be brief here because we want to be sure and have time for your questions. I'm first going to talk a little bit about the impact of the Affordable Care Act on demand for health professionals. Uh, as Miriam uh, illustrated for us, there will be a large increase in the number of Californians with health insurance. Um, and what we know from a large number of studies conducted over the years is that persons with health insurance use more health care services than persons who are uninsured, and that the greatest differences are in the areas of physician visits, prescription drugs, preventive services, and disease management. Uh, and this slide just provides some data from California to reinforce that point. This is from the California Health Interview Survey 2009, and the key takeaways here are that among uninsured persons, only 56% had one or more doctor visits in the past year. So only 56% went to the doctor at all, ever during that year, compared to 80 plus percent of the folks in who are, had health insurance of one type or another. Um, I think it's also important though as we think about the impact of the Affordable Care Act to, to understand that that's not in isolation that there are already a number of other important health workforce changes that we face here in California and in the nation. Um, first and foremost, uh, as Gretchen has pointed out, we have an aging population. Well, we have a healthcare workforce that's aging at about the same rate as that population. <laughs> so that's important. Um, we have shortages of health professionals in some professions, particularly primary care. Uh, geographic maldistribution, uh, far more providers per population and are more affluent uh, urban and suburban areas than in inner cities or rural areas. Um, we also need more racially ethnic diversity, more cultural competence, more bilingual health professionals. Um, many other things, including changes in scope of practice laws. Uh, and for those who know, scope of practice laws are state laws that govern what health professionals do. All health professionals need to be licensed or certified. And what scope of practice laws do is to spell out um, what uh, health professionals of different types can do. And for some health professionals, particularly nurse practitioners and physician assistants, there's a lot of variation uh, across the professions. And then last but not least, the recession that's challenging all of us in this country. I'm going to now move to talking about the provisions of the Affordable Care Act that have to do with health workforce development. Um, first, um, Marian, men Marian mentioned before um, that there's temporary increase in Medicaid reimbursement uh, for physicians. Um, there's also temporary increases in uh, Medicare payments uh, for primary care providers. So it's a 10% bonus for Medicare, it, Medicare primary care providers, and that includes uh, physicians, physician assistants, uh, nurse practitioners, and clinical nurse specialists. Uh, and again, here the goal is to improve access to care uh, by providing providers with more generous reimbursement. Uh, also bonus payment for general surgeons in areas uh, with uh, health profession shortages. Um, the Affordable Care Act uh, is very ecumenical, you might say, when it comes to the workforce in the sense that a wide range of health professionals uh, are covered by provisions of the ACA uh, that have to do with health workforce funding. Uh, so everything from physicians to direct care workers. Um, this slide is just to give you an overview of the various uh, types of uh, program, health workforce uh, development programs uh, that are authorized under the ACA. Um, first, uh, health workforce needs assessments and action planning, uh, planning how we're going to cover all of the newly insured. Um, changes in Medicare graduate medical education payments. Graduate medical education refers to residency. All physicians have to complete a residency program after medical school. And so they're the, the Affordable Care Act makes some changes in law to expand training in primary care and in ambulatory settings um, to better prepare physicians uh, for practice. Um, also reauthorizes existing scholarship and loan repayment programs uh, and creates some new ones to help health professionals pay for their 
uh, education. And in particular here, in ca at this time, when in California and other states we see big rises in, in tuition uh, in our publicly supported universities, scholarships and loans become even more important. A and then lastly, there are provisions of the Affordable Care Act that reauthorize or create new grant programs for health professions uh, schools to work on increasing supply and pri priority professions, improve racial ethnic diversity, and prepare professionals for practice in underserved areas. I um, want to now talk about some of the funding that has come into California under the Affordable Care Act for health workforce development. Uh, last fall, California was one of a number of states that received a $150,000 planning grant uh, funded through the ACA, and so this was the, uh, the purpose of this is for statewide planning for health workforce to assess the state's current and future workforce needs and develop a comprehensive strategy uh, for meeting them. And so this grant was, a tr was awarded to the Workforce Investment Board in partnership with the Office of Statewide Health Planning and Development. Uh, and these two agencies have formed the Health Workforce uh, Development uh, Council, and that council has been meeting uh, since last fall. Uh, they have had a series of focus groups around the state and are refining their plans, and I believe their plan they are going to issue uh, their uh, final report uh, over the summer. Um, and uh, the, uh, it's expected that the federal government will uh, issue a competition for implementation grants to implement these planning proposals, and hopefully California will be successful in getting one of those grants as well. Um, you can go to the, web, the URL that I've listed to get more information on the council. Um, this slide um, lists uh, the grants that have been awarded for health professions education. Uh, the largest share of the money has gone to primary care residency expansion. So this is residency programs for physicians in the specialties of family and community medicine, uh, general pediatrics, general internal medicine. Uh, and so that I think will you know, make some important expansion there. Uh, also um, funding around uh, physician assistant education, nurse practitioner education, public health, uh, personal home health aides, so a, a range of, uh, as I've said, a ecumenical wide range of health professions covered. Um, one thing I really want to point out is the expansion of the National Health Service Corps, and this is a quote from the director of the Corps. By the end of fiscal year 2011, so that's by the end of this September, um, they're expecting that there will be over 10,000 clinicians caring for more than 11 million people. Um, and that's going to triple the strength of the National Health Service Corps. And just briefly, for those of you not familiar, the National Health Service Corps is a program that provides scholarships and loan repayments to health professionals in primary care disciplines, mental health, and dentistry who agree to practice in underserved areas. A large number of them practice in community health centers. And they agree to, pr to practice for two or more years, uh, depending on the terms of their scholarship or loan repayment. Uh, to um, pr work in those communities in exchange uh, for their scholarship or for the loan forgiveness. And it's been a very successful program uh, and really, I think, important in the context of the Affordable Care Act because a lot of the folks who are going to be newly covered live in rural and uh, inner city areas and have been getting their care from community health centers uh, in the past. And so this is, I think, the core is a real important part of providing the workforce in those communities to meet the needs of the newly insured. I um, want to close by mentioning that the National Health Service Corps is the only workforce program for which the Affordable Care Act explicitly appropriated funding. Um, if you've worked in congressional or legislative staffs as I have, you, you've learned the hard way the difference between appropriations and authorizations. Uh, you only have the money for certain if it's appropriated. So the good news is the National Health Service Corps funding has been appropriated. Uh, the not so good news is that funding for all those other health workforce programs I've just talked about is only authorized. The Affordable Care Act says, Congress, you're authorized to spend money on these programs, but it doesn't specifically appropriate the dollars. And so thus, these programs are really vulnerable to efforts to cut non domestic discretionary spending, as we've all seen played out the last few weeks. 
and in fact, um, in the continuing resolution for fiscal year 2009, um, there is a $164 million cut in funding for the Bureau of Health Professions. That's the federal agency with the primary responsibility uh, for health workforce. Um, and that translates to about a 16% cut in that agency's uh, budget. Um, so as we go forward on to the fiscal year 2012, uh, I think a lot of concern and uh, about whether the resources are going to be made available uh, to fund uh, these important health workforce programs. And I'll stop there. And thank you.